November 1909, Gillingham, England. On a testing ground stands a 40-ton steel car. It balances on a single rail, thin as a razor's edge. Facing it are the officials of the war office. They are waiting for it to fall. At the command, all 40 passengers rush to the left side at once. The train does not tip over. Instead, it does something unnatural. It rises to meet the weight, as if coming to life, and returns to a state of perfect balance. This is not a trick. It is not an illusion. And it is not luck. This is Louis Brennan's gyro monorail, a machine that shouldn't have existed. And yet, it worked. The engineers were certain. This was the future of transport. The world was about to change, but more than a hundred years have passed, and we are still riding on two rails, designed in the 19th century. What went wrong? Today, we open the archive of one of the greatest missed opportunities in the history of technology. This impossible task was taken on by a man who had already, once before, changed the course of history. To understand the scale of Brennan's breakthrough, we must see what came before him. By the late 19th century, engineers were already experimenting with monorails. The most famous example was the Lartig train of 1888. Technically, it was a monorail. In reality, it was an iron fence. The train sat astride a high rail, like a rider on a horse, and desperately needed side supports to keep from collapsing. It was noisy, cumbersome, and unstable. It was a compromise, disguised as innovation. But Brennan wanted the impossible, a train that could stand on its own. No supports, no safety nets, like a living creature defying gravity itself. Louis Brennan was no armchair dreamer. He had already, once before, rewritten the rules of war. It was he who created the world's first guided torpedo. The British Admiralty was so impressed that they bought the patent for 110,000 pounds, an astronomical sum for the early 20th century. With this money, Brennan could have vanished into a life of comfort, but instead, he invested everything into a single idea. He saw the British Empire spending millions laying railways in India and Africa through mountains, canyons, and swamps. He knew there was a simpler way. Inside the car, hidden from view, were two steel discs weighing 750 kilograms each. But the secret wasn't in their mass. It was in the environment. The discs spun inside hermetically sealed casings from which the air had been completely removed. In this artificial vacuum, the gyroscopes spun up to 3,000 revolutions per minute. The real miracle lay in the system of automatic precession. When the train began to lean, mechanical sensors detected the change in angle and used compressed air to tilt the axes of the gyroscopes. This created a torque that literally pushed the train back into a vertical position. If a strong crosswind blew, the train did not lean with the wind. It leaned into it, automatically compensating for the pressure. It was a mechanical operating system, half a century before the birth of the first computers. Crucially, Brennan's system was entirely autonomous. No electronics, no external control. If the train stopped, the gyroscopes continued to spin by inertia, maintaining stability. Even in an emergency, the machine would not immediately fall. It was an engineering philosophy of safety, created long before the term even existed. And it was at this very moment that it became clear. This technology was far too important to remain in the hands of one man. Brennan was not the only one who understood the potential of this technology. In 1909, in Berlin, the German tycoon August Scherl unveiled his own gyroscopic train. This was no longer just engineering competition. It was a rehearsal for a future war of technologies. The German project bet on speed. Brennan, 
bet on stability and load capacity. All of Europe watched this duel. Who would be the first to change the map of the world? 1910, the White City Exhibition in London. The monorail becomes a sensation. It carries up to 50 passengers, reaches speeds of 35 miles per hour, and moves with astonishing smoothness. Winston Churchill steps on board and leaves utterly stunned. The military instantly sees the potential. A single rail could be laid directly onto uneven ground, spiked to ordinary logs, without embankments or expensive bridges. Brennan demonstrates the impossible. His train travels across a wire cable stretched between two cliffs. The future seems decided. And yet, we do not use this technology today. The first reason was fear. People did not trust the invisible power of the gyroscope, even knowing that if the engine failed, the discs would spin for 45 minutes, giving the train time to stop safely. Passengers felt more secure on two rails. The second reason was money. Railway corporations had already invested billions into the standard gauge. To accept the monorail was to admit that their assets were obsolete. The third reason was personal tragedy. At the last moment, the Indian government canceled its order. Brennan was left with massive debts and was forced to sell his life's work for scrap. But there was a fourth reason, the most important. A railway is not just transport. It is an ecosystem. Depots, standards, manuals, thousands of specialists. Brennan's monorail didn't just improve the system. It required it to be rebuilt from scratch. And the world rarely accepts technologies that demand starting over. There was one more reason, rarely spoken of. The military needed more than just a stable train. They needed technology that could be repaired in the field explained to a soldier in five minutes, and mass-produced by the thousands. The gyro monorail was too precise, too complex, and too smart for the era of mass armies. Sometimes a technology loses, not because it is bad, but because it is too good. Louis Brennan died in 1932, struck by a car. An ironic end for a man who wanted to make transport safer but his ideas did not die with him. The principles of gyroscopic stabilization today hold the Hubble telescope in space and steady the role of massive ocean liners. We build incredibly expensive maglev trains, trying to achieve the same elegance that Brennan offered back in 1907, using nothing more than two pieces of steel and the laws of physics. Perhaps we did not choose the best path but imagine for a moment, that history had gone differently. What if the gyro monorail had not been stopped? Railways could have been laid in weeks, not years. Trains would have climbed mountains without tunnels and crossed canyons without bridges. Supply lines would have been swift and resilient. Cities would have grown, not along massive embankments, but along thin, almost invisible threads of steel. Perhaps transport would have become lighter, more flexible, and far cheaper. Perhaps the very map of the world would look different today, but that world remains only on the blueprints. Perhaps the most perfect technologies do not win. Instead, it is the ones that are easiest to accept. Sometimes, progress is not a leap forward, but a compromise we have learned to live with. I want to ask you, would you have trusted your life to Brennan's gyroscope? Was this a missed chance to build a better world? Or was humanity right to choose caution over genius? Write what you think in the comments. Every thought matters to me. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in our next historical archives.